Hello, everybody. This is True Crime Podcast from the Hybrid Warfare Analytical Group at Ukraine Crisis Media Center, where we take on Russian propaganda and discuss hybrid threats and influence tools they use. Today, we will discuss weapons as a symbol in Russian propaganda discourse and why it works for the international audience. So please take a deep breath, buckle up, and let's delve into the most dangerous narratives Russian propaganda uses with us, the Hybrid Warfare Team. Russian vision of reality. First, it is worth mentioning some of the most detached from reality narratives that Russian propaganda spread, and even well before the large-scale war began. The leading Russian media often wrote about biological weapons, first about the American ones, and then about the development laboratories in Ukraine. The head of the TV channel Russia Today, Margarita Simonyan, said the following in a broadcast to another propagandist, Volodymyr Solovyev. All we know about American biological weapons is that they exist and can go off anytime, anywhere, or they may have already. And the speaker of the Security Council of the Russian Federation, Valentina Matvinenko, allegedly sent a report on Ukrainian biolaboratories to all parliaments of the world. The report on laboratories in Ukraine which, in particular, talks about fighting mosquitoes, ticks, and lice, was sent to all the world's parliaments. This type of weapon can also be used against people and animals. However, various fact-checking organizations, including PolitiFact, have repeatedly debunked these conspiracy theories. Moreover, Ukraine is a signatory on the prohibition of the development and use of biological weapons and participates in annual meetings in Geneva to uphold the Convention's norms. Ukraine also provides all necessary information within the framework of this Convention to other countries. It should also not be forgotten that Russian officials like to bluff with nuclear weapons. This strategy is relied upon to raise the stakes and reduce military aid to Ukraine due to the threat of a nuclear war. This, by the way, a favourite topic of conversation for Dmitry Medvedev, Deputy Chairman of the Council. However, do not be offended by their decision. Britain was, is, and will always be our eternal enemy, at least until their insolent and disgustingly raw island escapes the tidal wave created by the latest Russian weapons system. And here is another quote from the former president of the Russian Federation. Speaking at the St. Petersburg International Legal Forum, I called any attempt to create tribunals or courts for the so-called investigation of Russia's actions absurd. These proposals are not only legally void, the idea of punishing the country with the largest nuclear potential is absurd in itself, and it potentially threatens the existence of humanity. Russian military correspondents express similar ideas. For example, a blogger with the nickname 13th spoke on the occasion of the NATO summit in Vilnius as follows. Don't expect anything good from this NATO summit. Now there will be an attraction of, of unprecedented generosity, where the Kokols will be fed weapons so that the Russian nuclear missile will end this conflict. These and similar statements may indicate the apparent inability of Russian propaganda to respond to military aid provided to Ukraine, which is achieving success on the battlefield. Here we can recall the classic phrase of the Russian media. We haven't even started fighting yet. Cluster ammunition. The recent news about the transfer of cluster munitions to Ukraine from the United States has caused quite a stir in the information field surrounding Russia's aggressive war in Ukraine. Roughly, opinions on this decision have been divided into three groups. First group, supporters. Those who understand the importance of supporting the Ukrainian offensive and the challenges of increasing conventional ammunition production. Second, democratic opponents those who advocate for the de-escalation and peaceful negotiations. And third, Russian-minded opponents, mostly Russian patriots and those who have fallen victim to Russian propaganda. If we already understand Russia's positioning on its unforgiving war and methods used, then what worries the democratic opponents when speaking of providing Ukraine with cluster munitions? From a legal standpoint, there are no prohibitions that previously limited Ukraine to use this type of weaponry, 
At the same time, they have long been at Russia's disposal, often using them, which, by the way, has been widely documented. At the same time, the primary opponents were international organizations such as Human Rights Watch and the ICRC. Their position is based on the fact that cluster munitions are dangerous for the civilian population because there's always a certain proportion of submunition that doesn't explode and require special demining. These organizations find themselves in a logical contradiction between the desire to save the lives of civilians and at the same time playing along with the Russian narratives. The aggressor ignores calls to de-escalate the conflict and not to use certain weapons, and Ukraine loses the necessary potential to restore peace on its territory. As a result, they say that Ukraine's implementation of these weapons will only prolong Russia's genocidal war and will not contribute to peaceful citizens' safety. This is important to understand because the Human Rights Watch stated in their March 15, 2023 report that The Commission has concluded that Russian armed forces have committed, and in some cases are likely to have committed indiscriminate and disproportionate attacks, which are violations of international humanitarian law. The multiple examples of such attacks and the failure to take feasible precautions show a pattern of disregard on the part of Russian armed forces for the requirement to minimize civilian harm. Moreover, any information about the uncontrolled distribution of weapons transferred by Ukrainian allies has already been repeatedly denied by international audits. Nevertheless, Russia continues to spread similar fakes, such as The French police shot at the demonstrators with American rifles that arrived from Ukraine. The topic of weapons was and remains incredibly important for the Russian regime because the assumptions about Kiev in three days was based on it. Legal Framework It is worth mentioning that the use of most types of weapons and the conduct of war itself is regulated by numerous international conventions. First, this concerns the Geneva Convention, which defines the status of war between states, the protection of prisoners of war, and objects that cannot be targeted for attack, those that contain dangerous forces. As for weapons, there are Chemical Weapons Conventions prohibits stockpiling, development, and use. Biological Weapons Convention, same, but biological weapons. Convention on Specific Types of Weapons defines permitted and prohibited types of firearms in general. Ottawa Convention aims to end the use of anti-personal mines. Convention on Cluster Munitions aim for the non-use and disposal of such weapons. The first three conventions have been signed and ratified by most countries. Nevertheless, in Russia and the USA, for example, there are still potential factories that can produce chemical weapons. Russia, in general, has been seen to repeatedly use the poison Novichok, which, although is not considered a weapon of mass destruction, has been confirmed to be a weapon of choice by the Russian Special Services. Neither Russia nor the USA joined the last two conventions, Ottawa Convention and Convention on Cluster Munitions. Likewise, Ukraine also didn't join the Convention on Cluster Munitions. However, we observe that the Russian propaganda machine continues to use fake weapons in its disinformation campaigns. So, what does that leave us with? Russia uses armed rhetoric to intimidate so discord among allies, and delegitimize the Ukrainian government. For Ukraine, the support of allies remains vital, as well as the most comprehensive and prompt disproof of any information attacks regarding the inappropriate use of weapons.